Hello friends, I hope that you've all been well. First, I would like to apologize for the delay on this video. I have been really struggling to stay on top of everything, but slowly but surely, I am seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So for today's video, I am going to be painting this night with watercolors, which will serve as the cover artwork for a new zine that I have been working on for the past two months. As always, the supplies I use in today's video will be listed in the description. Also, the liquid that you see in the little plastic bottle that I'll be adding to the watercolors throughout this process is just plain old tap water that uh, I use in a bottle so that I can easily dilute the paints. So for those of you who are following me on Instagram, you'll know that the past two months I have been working on a Zodiac illustration series. So for the, for the past four years, every October, I embark on a monthly art challenge. I create my own theme and prompt list, and I do a series of illustrations that I then turn into a zine. Each year has been very stressful, but incredibly rewarding. And this year was no different. In 2017, I did a month of witches. In 2018, I did the theme I titled Mythical Beings, where I did a bunch of kind of monster and mythical creatures. And then for 2019, the theme I titled Living Fantasy, where I did a lot of kind of fantasy characters. And then this year, I decided I would do a Zodiac series. In the past, I had created about 24 to 26 illustrations during that month, which is a lot. So this year, I thought that maybe if I did fewer illustrations, then I could spend more time per illustration and, you know, kind of do the quality over quantity kind of motive. And so I had always wanted to do a Zodiac themed illustration series. And so since there's only 12 signs, I thought that was kind of the perfect fit. But I gotta say, I was definitely mistaken. Each illustration took so much time and energy, but I was really determined to see it through. So even though I didn't complete them in October like I had originally intended, I finally have finished the last one and I'm really, really happy that I was able to complete them all and that I can, you know, complete the goal of creating a zine in the end. So that being said, I thought that I would give you guys some tips on how to approach an art challenge as well as how to stay motivated with your artwork in general. Then at the end of the video, I'll show you guys each sign's illustration and I'll talk a little bit about them and the inspiration that I had for them. So whether the art challenge you want to take on is for a single illustration or a week or a month, there are a few things that I like to take into account before I begin to kind of help along the journey. So first is definitely gather lots of inspiration. When I decided to do this Zodiac illustration series, I wanted the overall theme to be fantasy warriors. So naturally, I spent hours and hours looking up various different images of female warriors, and I created a Pinterest board that had images of knights and samurais, etc. And of course, this can pertain to any sort of theme, whether or not you want to, you know, draw illustrations that are based around Halloween th themes or animals, food, etc. The key here is to gather up a roster of images to reference so that you always have inspiration ready at your fingertips whenever you're ready to sit down to paint. Second tip is plan ahead. So the level of planning ahead can vary depending on how prepared you want to be and how kind of in depth you want to go. One of the things that I plan for is what medium I want to use and what the general look that I'm going for is going to be. With this illustration series, I had decided I wanted to work mainly with watercolor and that each piece would feature the full figure of the character as well as a environmental background. 
Some people will do all of their sketches in advance so that all they have to do is paint or add color when the time comes. For me, the way that I planned ahead was that I created a mood board for each zodiac sign. This allowed me to have a clearer vision for each illustration and so that when the day arrived when I needed to create the piece, having these mood boards really gave me a clear direction for each sign and really streamlined the process. And of course, when I was creating these mood boards, I was looking up a lot of different information about each sign. I'm not a astrology buff by any means. I do find it interesting though. And so it was really fun looking up different traits and characteristics of each, each sign and trying to match a kind of warrior character for each sign. Third tip I have is find ways to entertain yourself when you begin to lose steam. By default, I often listen to music when I'm drawing and painting, but sometimes that just doesn't cut it. Naturally, when you're working on a larger volume of illustrations than you're normally used to, you may begin to lose motivation. For me, when I was feeling really unmotivated to create artwork, I would often put on a movie or TV show to play in the background while I worked. With this, I do make sure I put on something that I've already seen before or something that doesn't require me to watch too intensely. The reason for that is because while having a movie or a show playing in the background helps keep you entertained and occupied, you don't want it to, to take away too much of your attention. Otherwise, you'll end up getting distracted and not actually being productive. Listening to a podcast or audiobook is even better, I would say, like a better alternative to this as well. And I would say that the main thing here is that in doing this, you are helping keeping yourself engaged while you work. I find that in doing this, I look at my phone and social media much less. And so it helps keep me on task while also making the time feel like it's going by faster. And lastly, this might seem contradic contradictory to what I had just talked about, but the key I think is really try and enjoy the process. During your time creating artwork, whether it's a single illustration or a whole series, there are always going to be ups and downs. There was definitely a lot of days where I just felt exhausted and the last thing I wanted to do was paint, but ultimately I was really determined to see the series through. And looking back at all the pieces, I feel like I learned a lot. And one of the key things that I took away from this series is that there were a ton of color palettes that I normally would not have thought to use, but now really enjoy and will definitely be carrying it through to future illustrations. It was also quite fun seeing everyone's feedback to each illustration and seeing if people resonated with the character that was created for their respective zodiac sign. Of course, I definitely want to stress to you guys the importance of taking breaks and being mindful of your health as well. If you're feeling overwhelmed or finding that the drawings are bringing you more stress than they are enjoyment, then it's definitely worth stepping away from them and coming back to it later. Also, even if in the end you don't end up fulfilling the goals that you originally had in mind, try not to beat yourself up for over it. Rather than focusing on the things that you didn't achieve, be proud of the things that you did accomplish. Like for me, even though I originally intended to have these illustrations all completed during the month of October, I decided that rather than rushing through the rest or giving up out of despair, I would just give myself more time. In the end, I'm very glad I did because I wanted to make sure that I could try my best to do justice to each and every illustration rather than having, you know, the first half of them really detailed and then the other half uh, rushing through because I just wanted to get them done at a certain deadline.
So yeah, I hope that some of these tips help you guys if you decide to take on some kind of drawing challenge or just need help keeping yourself motivated to create the art that you want to make. And so before I show you guys all of the final Zodiac illustrations, well, for those of you who haven't already seen them on my Instagram, I do want to make a few disclaimers that the warrior characters that I created here are definitely meant to be seen as a fantasy design that takes inspiration from both fiction and real life. They definitely were not intended to be historically accurate in any way. Then lastly, when it comes to the zodiac signs themselves, like I mentioned earlier, I am far from an astrology expert, but it is a subject that I do find entertaining to read up on, and it was definitely fun to use each sign as loose inspiration for each of these characters. So without further ado, let's take a look at all of these fierce ladies. So first up, we've got Aries. This is a fire sign and is ruled by Mars, which is the planet of war. So of course it felt fitting to have this character be triumphant in the middle of the battlefield. Next is Taurus, which is an earth sign. I had read that one of the flowers associated with Taurus were poppies and that their main colors, one of their main colors was green. So those were the two elements I decided to incorporate. Then we have Gemini, which is the symbol of twins. I decided to interpret this sign with the concept of duality, which reminded me of yin and yang. So that's why I decided to create a piece that had light and dark contrast. Next is Cancer. People of this sign are seen as emotional and sentimental. And for me, these traits to me thought made me think of like a magic wielder who draws strength from their emotions. Then we have Leo, which is another fire sign with a lion as their symbol. So of course, this color palette had to be very warm and radiant. I also chose to give her an afro to emulate a lion's mane. Next is Virgo. People of this sign are seen as practical and analytical, which is why I chose to depict a knight who is in a war tent strategizing their next battle. Then we have my sun sign, which is Libra, who is the symbol of scales. This sign represents balance and peace. So of course it was only fitting to create a character that was very much inspired by the Lady of Justice. Next is Scorpio. People of this sign are described as being mysterious. So the first thing that came to mind was a ninja or an assassin. I also chose to give her a chain sickle as her weapon since it sort of rem reminded me of a scorpion. Then we've got Sagittarius. This sign symbol is an archer, so it was definitely a no-brainer for me to have this character's weapon of choice be a bow and arrow. Next, we have uh, Capricorn. People of this sign are described as having an air of prestige and are very goal-oriented. So with that in mind, I thought it'd be fitting to have a character defending their palace. Then we've got Aquarius, which is a sign that is has the symbol of a water bearer. Also, people of this sign are described as eccentric and individualistic. So with those in mind, a pirate seemed like the perfect fit. Last but not least, we have Pisces, which is represented by two fish. This made me think of a koi fish pond. And in turn, I thought that a female samurai would go really nicely with this motif. And that's all the illustrations. I hope that you enjoyed them. And if you're interested, I have a pre-order open for the zine up in my shop as well as the original paintings and prints available as well. From now until December 6th, I'm offering free shipping for orders over $20. So now's the time to grab something if you've been eyeing anything. Thank you guys so much for the support and I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!